question I always like to ask people is, who are you? And it's a question that a lot of people find it really, really tough to answer. If someone asks you who you are, if you're talking to someone on the street or you bump into your uh, cousins that you haven't seen in a long time, we always go to straight to, oh, I'm an engineer, I'm a teacher, I'm a doctor. Um, in my work as a life and career coach, I have this, uh, I love looking at the world and the fact that we all have different experiences. What shapes us, what makes us different from everyone else, We're from different places, different beliefs, different values, from different communities. We have different life experiences, both positive and negative, and all these things shape up who we are. But go, nobody in this world can step into your shoes and know what goes on in your head. Nobody can step into your shoes and figure out what it's like to be in your body. What lights you up and how do you feel when someone's talking about certain topics? What makes you come alive? Why I love uh, doing what I do is I get a chance to get into the world of other people and help them, help them think differently and see, help them to see what they can't see about themselves. That's so amazing. Last January, I went down to a school in Limerick to give a talk about a workshop that was coming up. And at the start of the talk, I asked everyone two questions. The first question I asked them was, who here in the last 12 months has been asked, what do you want to do when you're older? Everyone put their hands up. There's one girl at the front, and she looked so bored. It was like her mom was asking her to do the, do the laundry. She was like, oh. She'd been asking this question so many times. She was like, why do people keep asking me, what do I want to be when I'm older? And then I asked everyone the question, how many people here have been asked in the last 12 months, who do you want to be when you're older? Silence. Everyone was looking back at me, going, what is this guy going to start talking about? When I was 16, I was convinced I wanted to be an architect. I was in school, I loved going to technical graphics, now called design communication graphics. If someone offered me to do a day in class doing design communication graphics, whipping out the T-square, getting out the whiteboard, lining up the page, and trying to do a challenge that the teacher presented to us, I would do it all day long. Jerome, at the time, I was going, seeing a girl from Dublin who was 16, and we'd actually agreed that both of us were going to be architects, fall in love, and live the rest of our life together. And that hasn't happened. Because when I went into uh, TY, you get the opportunity to get experiences about life, to figure out more about yourself. When I was in work with an architect in Kelchma, I realized I'm in an office, I'm sitting at a computer, and at the end of the week I was like, I didn't enjoy that. But I love design communication graphics. What's wrong with me? I thought I'd really like this. I thought this was my future. And now when I look back, it makes a whole lot of sense. Because one of the things that I really value more than anything is connection. And when I was in that office, I was, I was sitting down at a laptop, looking at a screen all day long. And for me, that just really it dimmed my light. And then I was like, right, I've got to start thinking about things. And to do that, I had to look a little under the surface. So on the surface, I thought I wanted to be an architect. I thought I'd want to work with drawings. But when I looked under the surface of that experience, the things I learned about myself was, well, I do not want to be in front of a screen all day. And when I got into the nut of it, it was like, I want to be connecting to people every day. Since I was younger, I was only asking ma'am yesterday to clarify this, but when I was younger, I used to be playing football out the front of the house. And if neighbors would be walking by, me and my brothers would be asking them, here, do you want to come in for a cup of tea? Ma'am would be in the middle of the laundry, and Tom and Joe and Dickie Harry from down the road would be in having a cup of tea. I just wanted to talk. I just wanted to listen. I love learning from other people's stories. So what's very important to you? Something that it took me 26 years to figure out, and that I was never very clear on, was that to figure out what you want to be, it's very important to figure out what's important to you. What are you passionate about? What are your values? What are your interests? I called uh, one of the guys I used to work with uh, over a year ago, and he called me because he'd seen an article that I wrote in the Irish Daily Mail. And he was like, Thomas, I don't know what's going on. I'm feeling a little lost, and I think I need to talk to someone like you. So on the phone call, after talking for 15 minutes to make sure that it was a life coach he wanted to talk to, 
the three things he wanted to approach were, the first thing was social anxiety. The second thing was to get a, a bigger group of friends around him. He had moved location. And the third thing he wanted to talk about, but he was a bit reluctant, was his sexuality. And I was like, once you're happy to go, we'll go with that. 10 or 15 minutes into the first coaching session, his sexuality had reared its head two or three times. And I was like, Ryan, where do you want to go with this? We can go with one, we can go with two, but three keeps rearing its head. And he's like, okay, I can't go any longer like this. We'll go there. A couple of, co a couple of coaching sessions later, three or four months, and I'm sitting down and have a conversation with Ryan. At this stage, Ryan has come out. He's told his family, he's told his friends, he's told everyone he cares about, about his sexuality. Ryan went from, and in his words, ran from being a prisoner in his own body to being able to walk in his own shoes and be who he really was. What was the one moment that really mattered to Ryan and made all the difference? Was going through his values, and one of his top, top values was honesty. He'd spent 17 years lying to himself every day. He knew it, but he was too afraid to come out. It was a very scary thought. His social anxiety, he figured out, came from going out and lying to himself. He wasn't interested in girls, but he had to pretend he was to all the lads. So he didn't want to go out. It made him feel uncomfortable because he wasn't, be able, he wasn't able to be himself. His circle of friends, within a few weeks, just boomed up because he was able to turn up and just be himself. He didn't have to pretend to be anybody else. The reason I'm telling this story is just it's a very real example of when you get clear on what your values are, it can be a lot easier to see what's for you and what isn't for you. When I called Ryan, and his name is Ryan, I said, are you comfortable with me sharing your story? And he said, absolutely. Give them my name, tell them everything about me, run through all the sessions. If it makes a difference to them, please do it. He's like, just be honest. And there was his value creeping its head again. He got to show up as himself for who he really was. So how can we figure out who we are? For me, when I go through my values, stuff like social connection, family, honesty, these are the things to matter to me. And I have to figure out, well, why are they important to me? Go beneath the surface. No matter where you're at, whether you're 16, 17, or 18, there's a lot of clues in your last 16, 17, or 18 years that are going to give you a much clearer idea of what makes you tick. I didn't realize it properly until I was 26. But I go into coffee shops, I talk to strangers, and I'm talking for ages. When I go on holidays, I love talking to strangers. When I was six and seven, I was inviting strangers into the house to have chats. When my uncle and aunts were over at the house, I just wanted to go in and just listen. Hear what was going on. When I was in college, I loved going around just chatting to everybody and anybody, from the janitor to like everyone in the college. I spent more time in college than anybody else, but I spent less time in my lectures. Because what mattered to me, at that time, was connecting with people. And it doesn't change. I came up with this the other day. I seen another quote, and I thought this might actually suit better. It was, when your who comes through you, when you get to figure out your values and you're expressing them all the time, your who comes alive. You don't have to pretend to be anybody else. Think about the conversations you have that you really enjoy. Maybe you're talking about sport. Maybe a certain film. Maybe it's... Um, about music, this guy, Dermot Kennedy. A lot of people like him. So everyone likes him, but we'll all have our different reasons for like him and the way he writes his songs. But ask yourself, what is it about his songs that connects with me? I see everything you can be. I see the beauty that you can't see. Sometimes I think that's what coaching is about. Sometimes you're helping people see what they can't see from themselves. We're all unique. We all have our own little things that make us different from everybody else. And that's what makes our life worth living, because we're not the same. Me trying to be any of you just wouldn't work, because it's not who I am in here. Underneath the skin is where you find the answers. Here are three questions, just to finish up, that might help you figure out um, your what. 
When I work with workshops and I work with spun out and junk couture and the personal development, 90% of it's on the who, the values, your strengths, what do you love about life? And these are the three questions that can help you tie it all up. If you had the choice of doing any three jobs in your life without, and you didn't need to go to college, what careers would you choose? If you won 10 million euro but you had to work for the rest of your life, what would you choose? Name one career you would choose if you were guaranteed to succeed. Don't hold yourself back. These questions are asked to help you think without the limitations that we naturally place on ourselves. And then ask yourself, under the surface, what is this telling me about me? Thank you.